This is the first video in our Algebra 2 lesson series, and we're just going to do a little bit of a review from Algebra 1. Some important tools that you're going to need to help you through Algebra 2 is what we're going to review in this first chapter. The first one being classifying real numbers. Think of real numbers as numbers that can be represented on a number line. So if you have a number line, we'll have zero, count by twos, and so on. A real number could be zero, it could be four, it could be negative three, negative point five, if one was here, we could have three quarters, Here's where 3 roughly is, so we could have 3.14159 pi, and so on. So a real number can be represented by a dot on a number line. Each dot corresponds to only one real number. But let's look at the breakdown of real numbers. So first we have real numbers. Within real numbers, we have rational and irrational. Now what's the difference between rational and irrational numbers? When you hear rational, think ratio. So a rational number is a ratio that can be represented by an integer over an integer. So m over n, where m and n are both integers. So you could have 10 over 3, 500 over 20, 7,922 over 10,000, and so on. Those are all rational numbers. Irrational numbers are decimals that go on forever and ever, like pi. Pi is 3.141. 5926, and then it keeps going on. Also, the square root of 2. The square root of 2 is 1.414, and then it keeps going on, 2, 1, 3, and so on. But over here in rational, we also have 0.3 repeating. But because there's a pattern to this decimal, it's rational because we know that point 0.3 repeating could be represented as one third. So this decimal, although it goes on forever, there is a pattern to it and therefore is rational. Over here, there is no pattern to the square root of 2 or to pi among the decimals, therefore they are irrational. So real numbers are divided into rational and irrational numbers. Irrational numbers do not divide into anything else. So this is where our branch ends on this tree. However, rational numbers contain integers. Integers contain whole numbers. And whole numbers contain natural numbers. Let's take a look at this as a picture to make it easier to understand. Think of real numbers contained inside this box. So this outer box represents all the real numbers. The symbol for real numbers you could also write is an R. That R represents real numbers. Now remember, real numbers were breaking down into two separate groups. You had your rational numbers, and that's represented with a Q, and you also had your irrational numbers. And this is represented with a P. Remember, within the rational numbers, we have a breakdown of other numbers. So we're going to start with the inner box, 
and that was the natural numbers, which is represented with an N. The natural numbers are positive whole numbers. So one, two, three, and so on. So we have natural numbers. We also have whole numbers. And that's represented with the W. And the only difference between whole numbers and natural numbers is that the whole numbers also contain zero. So the whole numbers are zero, one, two, and three. But the natural numbers do not contain this zero. We also have integers. And that's represented with a Z. So the integers contain the whole numbers and they contain the natural numbers. So they have 0, 1, 2, and 3, but they also have negatives. So negative 1, negative 5, negative 26, and so on. And that brings us to the rationals. Rational numbers are all the numbers that I've already wrote within these boxes, plus decimals that could be written as ratios. So for example, one fourth, or negative 1.5, or 10.3 repeating. So the rational numbers represent all the numbers within the rational box. That includes the integer, includes the whole numbers, and includes the natural numbers. If we were looking at just the integers, we would look only inside the integer box. So all the negative integers, zero, and all the naturals. If we were looking at just whole numbers, we would only look inside the whole number box. That whole number box contains zero and the natural numbers. And if we were looking at just natural, we would look at only things contained within that box, which are just the natural numbers. However, all the reals contain all of the rational numbers and the irrational numbers. So for example, if I was to ask you to group negative 36, we know that it's rational and we know that it's an integer, but it's not a whole number because it's negative. So that would be grouped within the integer box, but not inside the whole number or natural box, but still within rationals and reals. So negative 36 is not only an integer, it's also rational and it's a real number. And we'll look at more examples in later videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel.